This question is about understanding what continuous distributions are and how we can how we uh, establish their properties, in particular the expected value and the variance, and then how we calculate the properties of linear transformations of this variable. So we'll start with this random variable x, and it has this probability density function. It's defined on an interval 0 to 5 and 0 otherwise. So let me draw a little sketch here. So we're having the PDF, a little f of x, and now let me use it if, and we're having x here. And the PDF is such that between 0 so it sort of lives between 0 and 5. To the left of 0, the PDF is 0, and to the right of 5, it is 0. And what's it in between? So we have an intercept of 0 0.1 plus k times x. So it's a linear function. So it could be something like this with a certain slope, or it could be something like this with a certain slope. Now, we in immediately know which one of these two options it has to be, or perhaps not immediately, but the important thing is, and that is now refers to A, part A, find the value of the constant k, which ensures that this is a proper density function. But what we need for a proper density function is that it integrates fx. So we need... Um, fx dx over its interval 0 to 5, this has to be equal to 1. So that is the area underneath the curve between 0 and 5 has to be 1. Now if it was anything, if you think about this, if perhaps the slope could be 0, right? The k could be 0. Now what would be the size of this area here? Well, it would be 5 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.5, which is less than 1. So the area has to be larger than it would be if k was equal to 0. That means it can't be a negative k because then the area just gets smaller. So it's got to be some type. The density function will look something like this. We just need to figure out what is the what is the slope. Okay. So you could sort of work this out by just geometry. We know that the size of this area here is 0 0.5. So you sort of need to find an triangle with the base of 5 and an area of 0 0.5 as well. Okay? So this area has to be 0 0.5 here as well. So you could work that out, but let's practice integration because that doesn't, that sort of geometric argument doesn't always get you uh, to where you want. So the integral of f of x that is 0 0.1 plus k of x dx should be 5, I uh, should be 1. So that k, we're basically now going to solve that and in the solution we will have a k and then we're going to solve for the k and see what that value of k is. So we need to find the integrand that is 0.1x plus k a half x squared and that from 0 to 5. So if you were to find the derivative of this, you would get this. So and we have here that will be 0 0.1 times 5 plus k over 2 times 25. And that should equal to 1, remember. So we'll basically have what we've done here now is and then we have actually I should I was doing a step too quickly so let's take that away and you should really see that what we still have here is we need to plug in the zero 
So there should be minus whatever the value of that function is at the value of zero, but that is zero because 0 0.1 times zero plus k over two times zero squared is just zero. That's why we end up with just a one here. So we have this equation and we need to solve this for k because the question is which k makes this true? Which k integrates this function to one? And we can solve for k, and I'll leave the steps to you, but it is 1 over 25. So what we learn from here is that the density function is 0 0.1 plus x over 25 for an x between 0 and 5. So now you can figure out what if we had, if we are at the right end of our interval 5, we're getting 5 over 25, that is 0 0.2, and we get 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. So that value here is going to be 0 0.3. Okay, and then we have that whole thing integrating to 1. So that's part A. Now, part B, evaluate the expected value in the variance of this. Now, if you have this density function, you can already tell that, so halfway here is 2.5. The expected value has to be somewhere to the right of 2.5 because we have more probability mass here than here. It's more likely that we get higher values than lower values. So the, then the expected value has to be somewhere, let's eyeball this somewhere here, perhaps around three. It's always good to do this sort of expect, think, what do I expect to find? Because now we can do the algebra and then you can test whether your algebra is, has perhaps a mistake. If you get something smaller than 2.5 or exactly 2.5, you know I've made a mistake. So the expected value of x, how do we calculate that? Well, it's the integral over the uh, support of the density function of x times f of x dx. So that's the definition of the expected value. So x times f of x, we basically get the integral from 0 to 5 of, so here's our f of x. If we do x times that, we get 0 0.1 times x plus x squared over 25. And then we need the integral of that. So let's think about what that will be. So that will be... So we certainly have an x squared here, and then we have 0 0.1 divided by 2. Okay, 0 0.1 divided by 2. Let's do, let's write it like this, 0 0.1 times 1 half x squared. Plus, then we get an uh, x cubed here, and it will be 1 over 3 times 25. So again, if you find the derivative of this, you will get this. So and that is evaluated at 0 and 5. So now we just got to plug in the 5 and then minus 0. But again, we'll see once we plug in the 0, we just get 0. So we just plug in the 5. And that will be 0.1 times a half times 25 plus 1 over 75 times 5 cubed, which is 125. And if you just punch that into your calculator, you will get 2.9167. So this value here is 2.9167. Okay, and that's exactly as we expected it. We didn't know the exact value, but from looking at that picture, you could already tell what approximately you should get. So what about the variance? Now, there are two ways to define the variance. It's either the integral of x minus the expected value of x squared Okay, it's the expected value of this or 
it is the expected oh, sorry the integral of x squared dx minus the expected value of x squared. We'll use that second form because we already have the expected value. That is this one. Remember what we calculated here is the expected value. That means we just got to calculate this somewhat simpler integral here rather than this one. So that is going to be Let's uh, calculate that here and we'll just complete that. So we know we need a value here and then minus 2.9167 squared. So we are after this value. So we are after the integral from 0 to 5 of x squared fx. Sorry, I forgot the fx. Um, well, I need to here we go okay so so x squared f of x dx so x squared times f of x here's our fx so we'll get 0.1x squared plus x cubed over 25. So we need the integral from 0 to 5 of that x. So again, we'll find the integrand. So that will be, we get an x cubed here at the beginning and we get 0.1 divided by 3 and then we get an x to the power of 4 and we get 1 over 25 times 4 and that is evaluated from 0 to 5 okay and if you now again that second part plugging in the zero will deliver a zero because you have x cubed and x to the power 4 here which will always be 0 so it's just going to be 0 0.1 divided by 3 5 cubed plus 1 over 25 times 4 which is 100 times 5 to the power 4 and calculating that will give you a value of 10.416 so we go back here, that is 10.416. And once we do this calculation, we get 1.91. So that is the variance of x. So we've now characterized our distribution x. Firstly, we derived what the distribution actually is. We had to find that k value okay and that turned out to be 1 over 25 that guaranteed that the area underneath the distribution is unity or it's a value of 1 as it should be and then using that value we could find the expected value and the variance now part c of the question says okay we have a new random variable g which is a linear transformation of that x, 5x minus 6. So now you just got to, and the question is, what is the expected value of g? Well, the expected value of g is the same as the expected value of 5x minus 6. The, the expected value of a constant, or that's the expected value of a sum, is the same as the sum of the expected values. So that's the expected value of 5x minus the expected value of 6. The expected value of 6, that's just a constant, so that is minus 6. Expected value of 5x is the same as 5 times the expected value of x, because a constant factor we can bring outside of the expectations operator. And the expected value of 
x is of course just 2.9167. So when you calculate that, you will get 8.6. And then the next question is, what is the variance? Let me just give myself a bit more space here. What is the variance of g? Well, that's the variance of 5x minus 6. Now, the variance of a sum where one of the sum is a constant, this here is a constant, is going to be the same as just the random part, the variance of the random part. And we can bring this constant factor outside, but we have to take this to the power of 2. Okay, so that will be 5 squared times the variance of x and once you calculate that you get 47.75 okay now of course we've been asked for the standard deviation and the standard deviation so we could write that as the standard deviation of x or perhaps sigma of x that is just the square root of the variance that's the square root of 47.75 and that is 6.91 so part d works in the same manner just has one slight twist so h is equal to 5 minus 6 x so the expected value of h, and now I'll jump a couple of steps, is going to be 5 minus 6 times the expected value of x. So Sorry, the expected value of h is going to be 5 minus 6 times the expected value of x, and that will be minus 12.52. And what about the variance of h? Here I'm going to take all the steps again. That is 5 minus 6x. So again, we have this constant um, additive term here that will just fall away. So that is because it doesn't add any variance. That is variance of negative x, negative 6 times x. Now, you see how up here we took this factor here and turned that into that factor squared outside. We'll do exactly the same here. Here the factor is negative 6. So we'll take that outside, negative 6, and we square it times the variance of x. This is, of course, negative 6 squared is 36 times the variance of x. And that will just be 68.76. Now, I'm, I've been somewhat sloppy. We are, we are always advising you to round to four digits. And my solution, I haven't. Uh, if I did a test, I may well lose marks here. So uh, please always write down solutions to two to four decimal points. And now we are asked for the standard deviation, standard deviation of x is going to be the square root of 68.76, which is 8.29. Okay, so the trick here was, or what, what was sort of different to the previous term here is, in our definition, the x turned in with a negative factor, it was negative 6 times x, and that showed in the expected value, because all of a sudden we had a negative expected value, but the variance cannot be negative. Variance by definition is an expected value of squared terms. So here we need um, uh, we take that factor out and once we square squared it will be positive. Now that of course reminds me that I let me use different color. I already corrected earlier I corrected this term I forgot the f of x I forgot the f of x here, uh, here as well, uh, in the definition of the variance. So that should be an f of x in here. We didn't use this definition, so it didn't have any consequence here. 
um, but that was an f of x in here. Okay, 